Hello, it's Maggie here. I thought while we were talking about the Queen's Platinum Jubilee that I'd revisit some of my royal stories. And because I come from Chester, I want to talk to you about the Duke of Westminster, that's the Earl of Grosvenor and his family, because they come from Chester. I always thought that he was the Queen's cousin, and I'm wrong. The dukedom, for some reason, was created by uh, Queen Victoria, and uh, it, it's a, a peerage, so this, this person is a member of the House of Lords. But um, uh, the, the existing duke now is the son of the duke that I'm going to talk about. Uh, the Duke that we grew up with and knew and loved was uh, a family man, incredibly nice man. Uh, I, I've never heard anybody say a bad word about him. A uh, very benevolent, uh, loving family man. And uh, sadly, he died at age 64. Now, uh, the titles that he held uh, were um, the Duke of Westminster which made him at one point the richest man in the land because he, he owned most of the land in London. And uh, once he died, that uh, that uh, property was all left to his son as his main heir, although he split things with trust funds with his sisters. Um, that man is now uh, very high up. Uh, apparently, on the, I'm looking down at some notes here because I made some notes, it gets a bit complicated. But he is the 12th richest man in the country on the Sunday Times rich list and wealth is estimate, estimated at 10 billion, that's billion with a B pounds. So they've got a bob or two, that family, uh, but I will say that they, um, they uh, do very kind acts for the communities and um, I have to say I've got a lot of respect for them. Now, um, I'm going to tell you about uh, the time when his daughter married in Chester Cathedral. And uh, I I just thought I'd go over a little bit of background first because uh, the family home, although there is the Duke of Westminster, the family home is Eaton Hall in, in Chester. And... Uh, and there's a garden centre called the Grosvenor Garden Centre next door to his home. And if you look at the palaces in London, uh, considering he, he was one of the richest men in the country, uh, you can you can go past the end of the driveway and look along the drive. It's, the drive is so long that you can't actually see the house. But uh, security is very subtle, shall we say. There aren't guards on duty evident um, at that point. Now, that's not to say that they aren't very well secured because they very evidently are, uh, but you wouldn't know it by looking at, at, at the home. And they do open that home up uh, to raise funds for charity. Um, twice a year, at least, twice a, twice a year, around about May and, May and the end of August, uh, they do. Lovely place to go. The garden centre is wonderful. If you ever get the opportunity, it's Grosvenor Garden Centre. And um, and uh, I I had to make some notes. I went on Wikipedia um, because I wasn't too sure of some of the facts. Now, um, Gerald, who was the sixth Duke of West Westminster, was married to uh, Natalia. And I've just discovered that his wife... As a, was of Russian heritage. She's a descendant of the Romanov family. And their son and, heir, son and heir, who is now the seventh uh, duke, uh, has married a descendant of a Ukrainian well-known family. So that's an interesting concept, isn't it? Of course, Ukraine is actually part of Russia. That's debatable at the moment, but... Uh, uh, we'll see what I, we'll see, but I think so. Um, the uh, the Duke of Westminster then, um, apart from being a, a peer, so it means that he could appear in the House of Lords. Um, he was also a Knight of the Realm. Uh, he also had a very important role. He was the General of the Territorial Army, and as such, my brother 
um, went on manoeuvres with them. And uh, my mum, my mum very famously had a, a a tale that she told that she um, sent my brother off on his trip. It was a trip to Germany, and uh, and uh, th in the middle of the night, Duke of Westminster stopped, spotted my brother uh, drinking some coffee from his flask and said, uh, "That smells nice. Um, you got any to spare?" And my brother said, "Well, anyway, my mum made it. You can you can have some if you like." So he wasn't too proud to. Um, <laughs> I don't mean he was too proud to beg. It. I'm not implying that, but uh, my mum, my mum's uh, dining out um, tale was the Duke of Westminster liked my coffee. He thought I made a very good cup of coffee. Well, that's very true. He did, but uh, he, yeah, he was the general uh, for the territorial territorial army. Um, now uh, he married Natalia, and I have met her. I'll tell you about more about her in a in a different story. Uh, because I've met her in um, in uh, uh, nursing capacity in my nursing career. Uh, the three children that they had then was uh, one. So I'm going to have a sip of coffee while I'm chatting to you here. Uh, cheers. I told you I wouldn't get a china mug here. They're very clunky. Coffee mug. So the coffee goes cold in them very quickly, even though I'm using coffee mate. Um, so... Um, uh, they had one son and uh, two daughters, and the eldest daughter, daughter uh, married somebody called Edward Van Cutsum. And although I didn't know the name, very well connected. Now, the guy that she married, this this uh, Edward, was the page one of the page boys at the very famous wedding of Charles and Diana back in 1981. So although his father uh, hadn't got a title particularly, they were horse breeders and trainers and old own countryside. They were obviously very well connected. I've got no idea how he knew them other than possibly polo, horse bre breeding, racing. I've got no idea. But uh, anyway, that's who she married. And um, the second daughter, Lady Edwina, married a TV historian, Dan Snow. Um, I know him as a journalist, Dan Snow. He's a, incredibly good, very nice man. Um, so uh, the, the family have all married well. Uh, the current Duke of Westminster, uh, this guy inherited uh, in 2016 when his father died and, and automatically became the next Duke of Westminster. Um, had had quite a, a normal upbringing uh, by the look of it. He, um, I, I looked up to see whether he'd been at university with uh, Prince William it, it, to see whether that was the link. And no, I can't find that link there. Uh, he went to Newcastle University and got a BSc in countryside man management. Now, um, Newcastle University is not, uh, you know, one of the poshest, not being funny to Newcastle, but uh, it's not up there with Oxford and Cambridge or St Andrews. Uh, so uh, he's had quite a normal grounding and uh, has needed to keep his feet on the ground, I think, um, uh, to look after to that. And interestingly, he, so this is now the current Duke of Westminster, is godfather to William and Kate's eldest son, Perhaps Prince George, and Prince George is third in line to the throne. So when the Queen dies, next in line is Prince Charles, then his son, Prince William, then his son, uh, Prince George. So they're all very well connected, even though they're not not uh, linked by um, an ancestry, I think. is the, They're not related, is basically the, the, what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I I um, went along to the wedding in 2004. I went, it sounds like I was invited, wasn't I? Well, me and the rest of the Chester residents lined the streets for the wedding. It was 2004 and um, Gerald and Natalia's eldest daughter, uh, Lady Tamara, was getting married to Edward. This is the one that was the page boy for uh, Charles and Diana. And uh, it took place in Chester Cathedral. I'm going to put my arm down so I can keep myself steady. 
stop this camera shake, um, took place in Chester Cathedral. Uh, there were snipers on the roof of the cathedral. The cathedral had been blocked off, obviously, for security for the week beforehand. And uh, there were obviously a police presence in, in the in around the cathedral. There were additional security officers around. And I suspect that there were quite a few plain clothes officers just mingling in the crowd. You, you truly wouldn't know. Uh, who was a security officer that he was standing next to. But I went along and stood on the streets opposite the cathedral. And um, who came along but Princes William and Harry. And they'd been staying in the Grosvenor Hotel. So obviously this is named after the the, uh, ho the family. Uh, the Grosvenor name is the Duke of Westminster's um, family name. I'm not quite sure. It's, I think he's classed as the Earl of Grosvenor. So anything that's got a Grosvenor estate or Grosvenor, and that's spelt with an S in it. So it's G-R-O-S-V-E-N-O-R. -E so the Grosvenor Hotel, uh, Poshest Hotel in Chester, just by the Chester clock. And William and Harry had stayed there the night. So um, they just got, they just walked up, up the road. Uh, there was no ceremony. There was no security around them. They just walked through the streets and waved to a few people. That was that was lovely. Um, the bride and the the bride and her father arrived in the car, and uh, all the um, guests to the wedding were bussed in, and they came by coach, and we were able to see them arriving. Uh, uh, by coach, got no idea where they parked the cars. Probably on the Grosvenor Estate somewhere, and they were going to return there for the wedding breakfast and ceremonies and and the party that they had back on the Grosvenor estate. So the bus, the, the bus, the coach was convenient for, for them to get them in and out. Uh, and then last to arrive were the Queen and Prince Philip and uh, they arrived by a separate car. So as a member of the public, of course, we dutifully waved and there was bunting up in the streets and uh, Chester Cathedral had been bedecked by um, the most beautiful flowers for the week. Uh, when the wedding was over, uh, the bride didn't actually stop for photographs outside. I think the journalists managed to get photographs uh, of them, but um, uh, there was no sort of, we're going to pose here. I think they must have posed inside the cathedral, certainly the, uh, as pedestrians watching uh, we didn't get to take photographs of the bride and groom as such but uh, it was all over Cheshire Live um, uh, Cheshire Life um, the uh, national newspapers would it was a big event national newspapers would have been there and uh, all the journalists hot foot it round to Starbucks to get a digital up for, l upload of the photographs to see who could get the photographs online and sold the quickest. And if you do a Wikipedia search now, a lot of the photographs are owned by Getty Images. Uh, some of the newspapers privately, like the Independent or the Daily Mail. But um, yeah, they, they're, those journalists, it was around the world global event. So um, as they came out of the cathedral, um, William and Harry were in one car. Of course, they were speaking then. And uh, William waved. He was on the side I was on. And then the Queen came past and she was on the side that I was on. And she waved as well. So that was lovely to see. The bus went past. I couldn't tell you who the people were on it, but it would have been all it would have been all the royals except the bit of gossip on the day was that Charles wasn't there. And this was the famous time that he threw his toys out of the pram, uh, kicking and screaming because they wouldn't allow him to mar marry Camilla. They had to change the law so that an heir to the throne could marry uh, an, a non-Christian. She wasn't Church of England, a non-Christian. So that was the gossip from that day. So all the links and royal connections, the fact that the bride was marrying somebody that had been a page boy at his wedding back in 1981 was a bit of a big thing that Charles wasn't there that day. Anyway, after uh, we emptied the streets, uh, I did go into the cathedral to see uh, the beautiful flowers. It smelled absolutely gorgeous. Uh, if you ever get the chance to visit Chester Cathedral, it is beautiful. Um, and uh, just open for donations. So that's my little story about the 2004 wedding. So uh, for now, it's uh, Maggie saying bye for now. See you soon.